Hello everyone, I am Yi Ming Chen from Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. It is my honor today to present our work LiSEC, an online and low latency activity segmentation method for Wi-Fi sensing. In recent years, wireless sensing has attracted more and more attention. Researchers use wireless signals such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RFID, and Zigbee to sense the behaviors of a person or the states of other objects. Since Wi-Fi is ubiquitous and not affected by illumination, Wi-Fi-based wireless sensing has been widely studied. Researchers extracted RSSI or CSI from commercial Wi-Fi device for sensing. Since Wi-Fi CSI contains finer green and more stable channel information, it is commonly used in existing Wi-Fi sensing applications. The complex value CSI contains amplitude and phase information. CSI phase is often interfered by a certain disturbance, such as SFO and CFO, while the amplitude of CSI is the generally reliable and accessible matrix for activity extraction and classification. First, CSI amplitude is a commonly used feature for Wi-Fi sensing. Most Wi-Fi sensing applications are re realized for activity recognition, which including activity segmentation and classification. A CSI stream collected from the Wi-Fi receiver must be segmented first to extract the useful activity parts. Then the classifier can classify them into specific activities. The performance of classification is influenced by segmentation. Different from other work in this article, we will focus on how to improve the performance and practicability of activity segmentation. The most common activity segmentation method used in Wi-Fi sensing is the threshold-based method. Existing words use a predefined fixed threshold to extract the activity. Users need to set empirical parameters to determine a good threshold. Some work has been improved on this basics. They are based on dynamical threshold adjust automatically according to the noise level. However, both of them ignore the granularity of target activity. In practice, coarse green and fine green activities usually occur alternatively and randomly. If the threshold is decided based on one granularity, it will extract the incorrect CSI segments. Take the application of elderly monitoring as an example. A target may walk to the living room, take a drink, and then sit down on a chair. The activity recognition system needs to continuously segment the coarse green activity and the fine green activity. In fact, different activities with different granularity can decide different thresholds for the coarse green activity. The CSI changes costs are distinguishable from background CSI noise, so a large threshold is appropriate, which can avoid the extracted activity containing unnecessary noise. But applying the large threshold to the fine green activities, meaningful CSI parks can be misdirected as noise, and the extracted CSI segmentation can be incompletely. On the country, if a small threshold appropriate for the fine green activity is applied to segment the coarse green activity, some unnecessary background noise might be included after activity extraction. But before activity extraction, it is difficult to set an appropriate threshold for all kinds of activities without knowing their granularity. The threshold-based method will always face performance degradation in this practical case unless it can perceive the granularity of the target activity. So how to perceive granularity? In 2020, DeepSec first described the importance of granularity awareness and provide an offline solution for the deep learning model. DeepSec successfully run the granularity of activities, enabling it to segment activities with arbitrary granularity. However, due to the high overhead of deep learning model, such methods are difficult to use online. To sum up, the two existing segmentation methods have their own advantages and disadvantages. Can we combine their common advantages? Specifically, 
is it possible to give a threshold the ability to perceive activity granularity? To achieve this goal, we possess a low latency online activity segmentation method, LISEC. Now let me introduce the overview of LISEC's design. First, we design a sliding window to obtain CSI data online. If users use hardware with limited resources such as MBIT devices, they can compress CSI data before processing. Because the algorithm complexity of LISEC is low, it is usually unnecessary to enable compression. The preprocessing module will process the CSI into data easy to segment. Then the activity extraction module determines the star and endpoints of the activities. The resulting CSI segment containing the activity will be used for the following activity classification. The rest CSI after segmentation in the current window will be spliced into the next window to avoid incompletely activity extraction. Next, I will introduce the design in detail. In the preprocessing, we first limit the amplitude of CSI to filter out impulse outliers caused by accidental vectors. Then, DWT can effectively filter out the noise and return the original characteristic of the signal. After denoising, we use PCA to reduce multidimensional CSI to one-dimensional CSI, which can remove redundant information and reduce computing overhead. In the result of the last step, we can see the changes during the activity are larger than that during the static part. So we use moving wireless to capture the differences. As so in this figure, the moving wireless of the activity is much larger than that of the static puck. In addition, we find coarse green activity will have larger moving wireless, which indicates that we can use moving wireless as the indicator of the activity granularity. Based on the extensive experimental studies, Without setting the threshold to 4% of the maximum value of the target activity wireless can accurately segment it for offline CSI stream processing. It is easy to control that only one activity exists in a sliding window or obtain the approximate location of a target activity. Then the threshold can be easily decided. But for online processing, number of activities in the window are unpredictable, so we introduce a new idea. That is updating the maximum value and threshold online during the linear traversal. Look at this figure. When the curve moves rightwards, if the current wireless value is greater than the previous values, we will get a new maximum value and the relative new threshold. In this point, we can see the maximum value of this activity is obtained and the threshold will not update it in this segmentation. Of course, Dysac doesn't know we have found the threshold. If the wireless is smaller for a certain length after a point, we judge the end point is found and denote the length as L length. Otherwise, Isaac will continue to try to update the threshold and find the endpoint. Due to interference, symbols in the static puck can be occasionally larger than the threshold data, leading to incorrect detection of activities. We define the value of the static puck above the threshold but with a duration obviously short as a normal peak and try to remove it. In the linear traversal, if there is a potential endpoint, we calculate the points smaller than delta in Ln. If there are enough points for some short period peaks exist, the potential point will be still regarded as the end of an activity. Otherwise, the activity doesn't end and LISEC will continue to find the end. A similar operation is conducted when looking for the star point in the second linear traversal with the threshold fixed in the first traversal. By this way, we remove the anomal peaks and obtain the correct star and endpoints of an activity. We evaluate LISEC on the public dataset provided by DeepSec. The sampling rate of the dataset is 1000 packets per second, 
but deep stack reduces the sampling rate from original 1000 to 50 packets per second because of the unfordable high computation overhead. The dataset contains 5 core screen and 5 high screen activities from 5 users who perform each activity for 30 times. We choose 80% of the activity samples as the training set and the rest as the test set. The transmitter is a commercial Wi-Fi router with one antenna and the receiver is a laptop with Intel 5300MIC and three antennas. We select the state-of-the-art methods DeepSec and Ymulti as the baseline of deep running phase method and threshold phase method. We use this expression as the matrix of segmentation accuracy, which is the same as DeepSec, where A represents the ground truth set of the star and endpoints, and B represents the predict set of the segmentation method. First, we compare with DeepSec. We find that in all the three scenarios, LightSec achieved the best performance. This is because LightSec can perform segmentation on the original ray CSI, but DeepSec has to run on the dump sampling data. To validate this, we conduct LightSec on the compressed data with the same sampling rate of DeepSec. We can find LightSec has all viewers' performance degradation. We infer that segmentation accuracy is negatively correlated with the compressed rate. We have further results to verify this conclusion in our article. The result is expected because with the same data, deep learning technical is much more powerful to extract segmentation features than the threshold. But thanks to the low overhead, Threshold-based methods can use the higher rate CSI data to achieve better accuracy. Then we compare with Ymulti. Ymulti uses a parameter RS to determine the threshold. RS is preset according to application scenario. By default, Ymulti set RS as 80. We vary RS to investigate the accuracy of Ymulti under different granularity. We can find in the result that the segmentation accuracy in three scenario reaches the peak at different RS, which indicates that different granularity activities correspond to different optimal RS. In practice, it is hard to present optimal RS for online systems because we don't know the granularity, but we don't need to present any parameter for LightSec according to the scenario. We compare the performance of Ymulti and LightSec Besides the default setting, we also select three optimal RS of mixed screen, core screen, and fire green scenario for Ymulti according to this figure. As the result shown in this figure, using the default RS, Ymulti has the worst performance, indicating the setting suitable for dataset in the original article is no longer appropriate to the deep set dataset. For Ymulti, it reaches the best performance when using the corresponding optimal setting of each scenario. But LightSec achieves higher accuracy than Ymulti with all settings. We further evaluate the impact of segmentation on activity classification performance. For fairness, we use the classifier probably provided by DeepSec. We repeat the experiment 10 times, and the error bars indicate standard deviation. As the result shown in the table, the classification accuracy is consistent to the segmentation performance, which proves that accurate activity segmentation indeed helps improve the classification accuracy. Finally, we test the overhead of LightSec and DeepSec to show the huge advantages of threshold in practice. Laptop represents the normal Wi-Fi device, and Raspberry Pi represents the resource-limited hardware. We have more detailed overhead tests in the article, including more hardware devices and the overhead of each step. Under the same hardware condition with the laptop, the average processing time of LightSec is only 3% of that of DeepSec. In addition, DeepSec occupies much larger memory. For Raspberry Pi, the processing time becomes larger. We can compress the data to reduce the overhead. But LightSec still maintains sufficient segmentation performance. Now let's draw a conclusion. We propose an online and low latency segmentation method LightSec for Wi-Fi sensing 
which can segment activities of different granularity. We realize activity granularity awareness from lightweight threshold based algorithm and solve practical segmentation issues of existing method. Compared with the baseline, LISAC significantly improved the practicability. Okay, thanks for watching.